Have you noticed how Jesus does things differently? Sometimes he rubs God followers the wrong way. Sometimes Jesus was provocative. Always to help clarify God's heart, let's follow him as he strolls through a field on a Sabbath, picking grain. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to them, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. As much as we hate to say it, the Pharisees have a point, right? Isn't Jesus like breaking the law? Some commentators see a particular Jewish holiday behind this story and the surrounding ones. This panel of stories where Jesus brings poor and rich together at the table, harvests from the field on a Sabbath, and heals someone during that holy day. These commentators say they are all connected. If Jesus' timing was so controversial, it begs the question, what was Sabbath really about? The law about resting has its roots, where else? In the Exodus. Exodus commands rest because God rested on the seventh day of creation. Deuteronomy commands rest as a reminder that they are no longer slaves because God has freed them. These weekly rests are accompanied by the holiday calendar. A Sabbath year occurred every seven years where they were to live off what the land yielded and share it with outsiders and even animals. But the Mac Daddy of all Sabbaths was the Jubilee year when prisoners were set free, debts released, and land redistributed, breaking intergenerational poverty and opulence as everyone celebrated that they belonged to God together. So, as Jesus and his wandering gang strolled through the field gleaning some grain, depending on God for their next meal, who really understood Sabbath? The Pharisees or Jesus? Jesus gives us a jubilee ethic for Sabbath rest, an advocacy for freedom. Jesus' authority to clarify God, his ways, his laws, his character, raised some eyebrows. Remember in chapter one when Jesus challenged evil spirits? We're looking ahead in chapter six where his teaching amazes folks as much as his miracles do. Jesus seems to know the heart of the law and God's intentions more than anyone. And what is at the heart of God's law? While we're using Markin maps, let's put on some Lucan lenses for a moment. In Luke's account of that latter teaching moment where Jesus is back in his hometown, he reads a very specific passage from our now familiar New Exodus prophet, Isaiah. Luke paints the scene this way. Jesus returned to Galilee and the power of the Spirit. The news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus, a bit more obviously in Luke, is depicted as a servant figure from Isaiah, coming to announce a jubilee year, the freeing of slaves, the reality of dependence, the purpose of Sabbath. Rest is really about being free to be with God, dependent on God, free from unnecessary burdens we place on one another. So, when Jesus does stuff differently, rubbing people the wrong way, he is trying to give us a better glimpse into the heart of God. And thanks to another gospel writer, our homeboy, Matthew, we know what he's up to with these laws. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. He isn't breaking the law, but fulfilling it, showing us what God intends, what he is like. And the Pharisees had forgot the purpose of rest, the aim of Sabbath, the fulfillment of Jubilee. If Jesus announces Jubilee, a fulfilled Sabbath, how do we understand our freedom in Christ?